everyone! Today I'm going to talk about how to weather fabric to make it look old, distressed or generally used. Now, there are a couple of different aspects to this. There's what I call the dry aspect, which is physical weathering. And then there's the wet aspect, which is discoloration. I like to do the dry aspect first, so you can get it all done in one day. So I've got some fabric here, just plain white cotton. These techniques will work for most of natural cotton fibres and most man-made fibres but you might have to change your approach slightly so I do suggest always doing a test first on a scrap of the fabric if you can. So to start with I want to give it a rough looking hem. Now I have to just cut this out roughly and as you can see it's starting to fray a little but it's not looking very lived in yet. Now important to consider are your scissors blunt scissors when you cut they will give you a rougher cut as they rip the fabric more sharp scissors when you cut will give you a smoother cut so for stuff like this I do actually try to generally use rougher cuts so uh, the blunter scissors work pretty well now we'll remove that bit so we don't get confused now along the edge I'll start by doing some little 45 degree angle cuts. You just want them to be small. And that's just to give a basis for some damage. Now you might want to pull and rip at them, which gives a deeper cut there. Or you might want to get a knife, make sure it's a sturdy knife. Do not be tempted to try and use your scissors as a knife. I have cut my hands many times doing that. Don't do it. Let's get a sturdy knife and run into those cuts a bit more. And you can just damage them up a little. One way you can use the scissors is to keep them open as a quite narrow V and run that along the edge. And you're not putting much pressure on, you're just letting it get caught and letting those fibres pull out loosely. So I'm going to finish doing that along the edge here. And you want to keep kind of changing up the techniques as you see fit. Remember, this, this is going to look messy, so you're going to want to uh, adapt your approach as you see what works and what doesn't for the specific look you're going for. Now when you've got roughly the kind of uh, shape you want here, then you'll want something like sandpaper. And this is 100 grit. I like nice coarse sandpaper for this. And you can just get a piece and just run that across the edge or hold it flat and rub it along the whole thing. This will help to pull the fibres out even more and just really make those edges look really roughed up. Now, if you want a hole anywhere else aside from the edge, cut your hole and then get your sandpaper in. Because it's the difference between having a nice, neat... I have obviously just cut this whole hole and having one which has obviously been damaged and ripped. Now, as a word of warning, if you're going to use steel wool for roughing up the edges, it does work, but it will leave fibres of steel on your clothing, so you'll want to be sure to get rid of those before you wear it. Now, I wouldn't personally use steel wool, but I know lots of people like that for, for sanding and weathering. And then it's pretty much just go for it until you're happy with the overall shape. If you end up with any obvious corners, like there, they're likely the bits that will be damaged first as they flap off, so you might want to just completely remove them and rough up the edge. Another way to use knives is to just pull them across the surface and make sure you have a safe surface underneath. I'm using my work table which is designated for this but use a cutting mat if you don't have a work table. 
and if you go over the same areas multiple times you'll get little areas where it's damaged slightly more and it starts to break through remember to change your angle make it look a bit more realistic and again rough all of that up and then once you get to a state that you're happy with it's onto the wet part okay for discoloration one of the most common methods is using tea and tea dyeing or tea staining you can use coffee as well but I much prefer the smell of tea so I've got some nice hot water and you want to get some tea bags that you don't mind wasting they're all the same to me I don't drink tea Stir those around for a bit, make sure that the colour really comes out of them. Basically make a really bad cup of tea in a vessel large enough for your fabric to move around in. Now, really importantly, if you leave the tea bags in, they will act as little concentrated patches of dye, which will give you a kind of uneven dye with big lumps coming through. So if you want a more even dye, be sure to pull them out. But as I'm doing weathering and not aiming for an all-over colour here, I'm going to leave them in. Now if you just want a bit of staining down the bottom of your fabric, just gather it up and dip it in and you'll see that the tea starts to stain the bottom. Now if you want a more smooth gradient you can get a spray bottle of water and spray upwards. That will help the, the liquid wick up the fabric better and won't leave it quite so saturated. If you want a more all over colour of course, you can just dip the whole thing in and leave it for hmm, half an hour, 45 minutes. Now the other method with tea dyeing is to get your tea bag, which is really hot, ow, and then just dip it on, squeeze it over and you'll get more patchy bits where it's taking up the dye then. And this is good for an overall aged look or if you want to just change the tone of fabric to make it look a bit dirtier. It's also good if uh, it's fabric that's meant to have been in a desert or this kind of colour environment or for aged historical stuff. Ugh. And for the other half of discoloration going to use acrylic paints. Now acrylic paints are great because they won't wash out of fabrics. Your tea stain might fade a bit over many washes but these won't. They do however dry a little bit crunchy so you could use fabric paint if you prefer. Anyway on my palette here I've got white and black and green and red. The green and red is mostly just to make some nice brown because I don't have brown paint but this way as well you can control what kind of brown you end up with. And there is method to me mixing it up with a stick. I've also up here got a pot of water and if you use the water and the stick you can flick it on for some nice mottled bits of dirt spray. However for most of it what I like to use is a sponge again I'll generally dampen the sponge a bit get some paint on it and then start smearing it on and really do smear it on because it mimics you know dirt stains dirt isn't going to be nicely blotted on with a sponge it's gonna be smeared Now if you water it down it also means you can control how heavily it goes on rather than ending up with just a solid blob of colour. You know you can water it down, make it look you know deeper over there, use a corner, get it a bit milder over here, and so on and so forth. 
So we're looking pretty good on this side. Obviously it needs a bit more work, but I'm not going to go through the whole process right now because it does take a while and it gets a bit boring. For dark fabrics, obviously your black won't work, your tea staining won't work. That's why we've got white. You might want to add some yellow to make it more kind of deserty dirt look. And our browns will still work. Much the same process. Making sure it's nice and diluted. And you want to think about the colours you're using as well for, like I say, yellowy white for desert dirt, white for arctic dirt, or a grey for urban dirt. You want to think about the colours of where you've been and uh, basically try to make your weathering tell a story of where the costume has been. And then after a few hours, don't be afraid by the way to wipe your hands on this, that's fine. After a few hours of careful application, you should have something that looks quite a lot worse than when you started. And then of course there's the question of when and where to weather. Now I like to do my weathering after I've completed the whole costume. That way when you've got the whole outfit together you can see where bits lie. You don't want to start weathering a section only to find that it's the centre back or something where you wouldn't be weathering it much anyway. Also, if you sew your costume together before you weather, you'll end up with lovely white, pristine, clean bits of stitching on there, which won't look good and you'll have to go back over with weathering. As for where to weather, think about which areas of the outfit will get the most use. So the hems will always drag on the ground, they'll be kicked up dirt, so the bottom, the hems, you want to focus on them on each layer and you'll want to kind of have a gradient of it coming up. You want to have lots at the bottom and it getting slowly less as it goes up. You don't want a sudden kind of loads of weathering then nothing. You want it to fade upwards. You'll still want some weathering up the upper half and you might want to have some specific areas of weathering like a bullet hole or a rip but those bits, you know, they shouldn't be covered up here unless you want to make the whole thing weather top to toe like you've been crawling through dirt or whatever. Also try to think about specific regions like elbows, knees, shoulders get a bit of wear of pull and seams, wherever there's a seam dirt will accumulate more anyway so you might want to focus heavily on those areas. Do be careful when you're weathering, you don't want to overdo it. It's always easier to add more than to try and remove it. So start slowly and build it up until you're happy with it. Also don't do all of like your cutting weathering, don't do loads of that and then save your discoloration right for last. You might want well to do that in stages, do a bit of one and a bit of t'other so you can build it up gradually and see how the whole effect will look, at least until you're a bit more comfortable with the techniques. Don't be afraid as well to repair or repatch some bits. So if you put a large cut you can always stitch it back up. I like to use waxed linen or cotton thread or embroidery thread as it's big obvious thread that makes it look like a hand done repair. And patches, think what kind of material you'd patch something with. You'd go for your heavier cottons, your denims, your leathers, your suede. You can always add a patch and that's really helpful if you overdo the cutting and need to give the garment a bit more stability again. For anything more specific like fire damage, there are methods to do that but I will probably go over those at a, a better time because I have a smoke detector about three feet above me but you can mimic those realistically. Obligatory don't try that at home kind of warning though. Other than that, have fun with your weathering and uh, yeah, enjoy making things dirty. Catch you next time!